Yeah. Okay, today's daf is daf ayin aleph in in Yavamis, and uh, the parak is ha'orol. It's the nicest parak, uh, Stephen, in the in the all of Yavamis. A lot of uh, famous uh, uh, sugyas in shas, so it's it's a nice parak to know. So we are holding in the middle of ayin aleph ayin amid bay is about 15, sixteen lines from the bottom e. Just to recap over here, um, here we are. Okay, so uh, oh. so just to recap, the the Gemar that we started off this Perek. We started off the Perek that said that. Okay, hold on, Shalom's coming. Yeah. All right, Shalom, Shalom Leichem. Leichem, Shalom. But yet, ungeheiben. All right, just since you came in. Yeah, fine. Just in time. Yes, in time. How is it? Yes, Ah, fine. In the next potag. Um, Okay, so basically the parak began an ural. Uh, somebody who doesn't have a bris mila is not allowed to eat truma. That's what the Gemara, that's what the Mishnah said. So the Mishnah said, how do you know that? So the Gemara said that we have Exerashava. By carbon Pesach, it says, Toisha Vesachi. You see over here, Toisha Vesachi. And it says by eating Truma, it says the word Toisha Koyen Vesachi. So we have Exerashava. So we said that just like an oral can't eat, uh, somebody doesn't have a Brismila, Ungamalit can't eat, he, he, uh, somebody who oh. doesn't have a Brismila cannot eat. Carbon Pesach, so we send down the conduit, right? The, the we send down that also by Achilas Truma, somebody who doesn't have a bris mila can't eat Truma. Then the Gemara asked, the Gemara asked another question: If you're sending things down the conduit from Carbon Pesach to eating Truma, so why don't we say that just like on Carbon Pesach, an Ovel is not allowed to eat the Carbon Pesach and Oinin, so say an Oinin is not allowed to eat Achilas Truma. So the Gemara said that the, the Gemara gave two turutsim. Either it's more, more mistabra to say that, uh, that an oinin, uh, that oinin is permitted to eat truma, simply because the only reason why an oinin can't eat carbon pasach is because you know it from somewhere else. Carbon pasach knows it from Iser. So that doesn't say anywhere here that an oinin can't eat Carbon Pesach, so we don't send it down to Achilles Truma. That's what the Gemara said. Okay, here we are. And we're going to come into very interesting, fascinating things in the Gemara today. And what is called an oral? What is called somebody who's not circumcised? So here we are, about 16 lines from the bottom of Ayin Omebeis. The Gemara says, if you're saying you have Exerashova, so why don't you say Yuma Pesach, just like a carbon Pesach, Milas Zechora Vavoda Makavis. The Torah says that if you have an Evid or you have a, a son, a son, you have a, a boy, and you didn't give him a bris milah, you cannot eat from the carbon Pesach, even though you have a bris milah. I will say that. Af truma, so also the same halacha should apply by truma. Milas zechara va'avoda makavis. That if you didn't give a bris milah to your slave and your own children, you're not permitted to eat truma. Why don't we say that? Send it all back down this, this conduit. To, from Pesach to Truma. Answers the Gemara, Amakra, the Pesach says, U malta oisoy, boy. The Torah says that by carbon Pesach, that after you give a bris mila of your, of your Eved, your slave, right, then you can eat the carbon Pesach. So there's an extra boy over there. So we darshan, only bilas gharva vodema keves boy, only not giving a, a mila to your slave stops you from eating carbon Pesach, Melech Pesach, it's limited. It only stops you from eating carbon Pesach. The Eimil is keves betruma, but not giving a bris mila does not stop you from eating truma. So there's an extra boy that says that that is only limited by carbon Pesach. That idea of milis khar does not apply by truma. So the Gemara says, wait a second, but there's another Pesach that says by carbon Pesach, why don't you say the same thing? 
The Pasuk says, by carbon Pesach, call Orel Loyech a boy, whoever is not circumcised cannot eat the carbon Pesach. You see the word boy? Only carbon Pesach. Boy, I know, an uncircumcised person, an oral, cannot eat the carbon Pesach. Avul Oichel who be truma, but he could eat truma. Why don't we say that? Answers the Gemara, but Hoksiv, Toishav, Sochir. But isn't there a Shava that says you send something down the pipe? That you say that just like things are, there's a Gzair Shava, Toishav, Sochir, to tell you that whatever is also by carbon Pesach should be also by Achilas Truma. So you have to send something down the pipe. So you send oral, that you're not allowed to eat, it circumcises, and you're not allowed to eat, you're not allowed to, oral is not allowed to eat carbon Pesach, and oral is not allowed to eat truma. That's what the Gemara is saying. So the Gemara asks the question, Umar Isa, what made you pick what to put down that conduit? Maybe put down that an oral could eat truma, but if he if he didn't give a bris mila to his ebed, he can't eat truma. You hear that? The Gemara is thinking that way. That if you, if you didn't give a bris mila to your zachar and your, your own son and your slave, then you can't eat truma. So the Gemara says, no. Mistabra, I would think, uh, Mistabra, it's more, uh, makes more sense. Arelis to gufi have a rabuye. That arelis of non circumcised person, you should put down the conduit and say that that's also, also by truma. Why? Because there's so many things wrong with an earl. He's missing something he was supposed to do on his own body. The Anush Karas. And he has a punishment of Karas by not giving a bris mila for himself. So it's a very uh, severe problem that an oral. So if there's a severe problem of an oral eating carbon Pesach, I would say that there's also a severe problem for, a carb, for an oral eating the truma. So the Gemara says, Ada Rabbit, say the opposite. Milas zecharav avodov havi later ubuye. Say that the not giving a mila to your to your own slave that should prevent you from eating truma. Why? Because that is even worse than you yourself not having a bris mila. Shekain yesh da b'cholsha. This could happen every hour. In other words, if you're an oral, you could correct that by giving yourself a bris mila. But it's possible to have a son uh, and or buy another slave. And you can reinvent the problem of not giving a bris mila to your to your to people who you are responsible for. So the Gemara says, Hanach Nefisham. The answer is that the fact is that you yourself not having a bris mila is still worse. There are more problems with that. It's Maisa Begufoy, Anush Karis. It was bris mila, the Gemara says, was uh, something that was given prior to the giving of the Torah. So therefore, most likely that the Torah said that you yourself, if you don't have a bris mila, you can't eat the truma. And and if you and you're if you didn't give a bris mila to your servants, you could eat truma. And then logically, without that, you can't really say anything like that. Even without, even logically, how would you say this? Is it possible to have something? For example, truma, which is our discussion. That the Torah is going to tell you that if you're an oral yourself, if you're uncircumcised, you have no problem eating the truma. But the, but the, the, the fact that you didn't give a, a bris mila to your children or your slaves, that's it stop you from eating truma? It can't be that way. So it must be the opposite way. So the sensible drusha is that what? That uh, uh, if you're an oral, you can't eat truma. But if your children or your slaves are an oral, you can't. You could eat truma, unlike Pesach. You can't eat carbon Pesach. Now, now the Gemara says like this. You said boys are drushes. So now the Gemara is going to say, look at this pasuk over here. The pasuk says, "Call Ben Necha Yoicha Boy." You you you, you introduce the things that are 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 you you darshaning things from. And the Torah tells you that the carbon Pesach, these are the laws of the carbon Pesach. Look at it says, call Ben Nechar, if you're if you gave up if you if you gave up your religion. All right, you were a Jew, but you just decided to, to give up the whole religion. Lo Yoicha Boy, you cannot eat the carbon Pesach. It means that the people at the Seder table can't feed you the carbon Pesach. They get an Avera. So now. Hashter boy ledrashi dasa kol ben nechar leyecha boy. What do you do, Lamali? What do you do with this boy of kol ben nechar? Any Jew that went off the derech, he can't eat the carbon pesach. Answers the Gemara boy. So we go to the top of Ayin Aleph from the Aleph. Boy mushu bedes. 
Pesula. And Mishumedes is somebody that what? That walked away from the whole religion. He's Paiselis, that he can't eat the true, he can't eat the carbon Pesach. They Mushumedes Paiselis Bamasar. Mushumedes, somebody who gave up the religion, is not, is, it has no Isser for eating Meiser Shemi. Okay, if you give up, if you if rebelled against the Jewish religion, the carbon Pesach is off limits, but not Meiser Shemi. Fine, so that teaches you that. It's interesting that some of the Rishonim, like Rabbeinu Gershom, famous, had children that converted to Christianity. So that's what this Ben Nechar was. The Torah tells you that anybody who's not circumcised cannot eat boy. Boy is the carbon Pesach. What are you dashing with this word boy? Lomali. So the Gemara says, boy ain't no echel. You can't eat the carbon Pesach. He can eat matzah and mora. That's uh, that's the, only the carbon pesach is an oral a problem, but the matzah and mora is not like the carbon pesach per se. And somebody who doesn't have a bris milah could eat the matzah and mora. Bear in mind that when I say somebody doesn't have a bris milah, it could be according to the way Rashi explained it that it's not that he's on purpose not getting a bris milah. It's just that he has a family risk of getting a bris milah. So nevertheless, even though it's not his fault why he doesn't have bris milah, he cannot eat the carbon Pesach, but he is permitted and he has an obligation to eat matzah and mara. Now the Torah told you that somebody doesn't have a bris and a Jew that went off the derech, that, uh, that uh, uh, re- rebelled against his religion, can't have the carbon Pesach. Why do I need both of them? Usually they're one of the same person, if it, especially if he's on purpose not having uh, giving himself a bris milah. The Torah had to write you that both cannot partake in, uh, in the carbon Pesach. The Torah only wrote that an oral can't have the carbon Pesach. The reason why, dim is, the, carbon, the oral is disgusting. He never gave himself a bris milah. There's something wrong with him, his body. Even though he wants to be a yid, but there's something wrong with his body. So I understand why he can't have the carbon Pesach. But if the Torah didn't tell you that a Ben Nechor can't have the carbon Pesach, of a Ben Nechor, the Loim is, the Ben Nechor, which is the person that re- rebelled against his religion, maybe his parents gave him a bris at, at birth, so he doesn't, he's not really disgusting in his body. A Malloy, I would think that he's not prohibited. He's not prohibited from eating. He could eat the carbon Pesach. That's why the Torah had to tell you that a Ben Nechor can't eat the carbon Pesach. Because of Rachamana, if the Torah only wrote called Ben Nechar, the Torah only wrote that a Ben Nechar can't eat the carbon Pesachs. Why? Because at the end of the day, what is a Ben Nechar? He, he, he just rebelled against the whole Jewish religion. He's, he's a Meshuman. So therefore, he can't eat the carbon Pesach. Aval Oro, but if I would think that if the Torah didn't tell you, I would think that an Oro, somebody who didn't give himself a bris milah, really, he, he's a Jew at heart. The Libai Lashamayim, his heart is to heaven. And, and he just can't go through the bris milah for whatever reason. A Malloy, I would think that he's not included in that prohibition. Maybe he could eat the carbon Pesach. Tzricha, that's why we have to tell you both that the Benechar and the Arel can't eat the carbon Pesach. Look at the Gemara. The Pesach says, Mimenu, Mimenu. But Mimenu, Mimenu. So the Torah says that Mimenu, Mimenu. Hanoisu, Mimenu. So the Torah tells you twice the menu. Lamali, what do you need the word menu? The Kedurabba Amar Yitzchak. What, what Rabba Amar Yitzchak tells you, and he teaches you what the darshan from the word menu. We're not going to go into that. Rashi says it's not relevant for our Gemara. Uh, so that's why, uh, but again, we're darshaning every word of this, uh, of this part of the, what it says by carbon Pesach. The boy, etc., etc. Now we're going to go into another opinion. Amamar, we learned before, I told you that the, the opinion of Rabbi Elezer was, how do you know an oral can't eat truma? Because you have a Gzereshova that tells you Toshev Socher by carbon Pesach, right? Carbon Pesach to truma. That was Rabbi Elezer's reason. Rabbi Kiva just had this reason. It says, ish, ish. You see it on the screen here. Ish, ish. Bizera Harim. And if you tome, if you have a trust, don't eat the, car, the, the, the truma. So ish ish we darshan, every man a real man could eat uh, uh, could a real man eat the eat the truma, 
not somebody who has no bris mila. That's how Rabbi Kiva darshins. I don't even need the gezeres shava. The pasuk says by truma ish ish. The rabbi is to teach you as an oral that an ish not only a tame can't eat the truma, but ish an extra person can eat the truma. Who is that? Somebody who doesn't have a bris mila. The aimer let us say the rabbi says oinim. Let us say maybe the Torah means that somebody who's an oral can't eat the truma. How do you know it says it means oral? The the Torah tells you that that's the next possible. The Cholzar, if you if you're Yisrael, you're not a Kohen, you're not allowed to eat Kaidish. There's another Pasik, not this one, but the Cholzar, Oh, Cholzar, this is the Pasik. Yeah, Cholzar, any person who's not who's a stranger. Zar is a Only a Yisrael can't eat truma. Vlayaninus, but not a Kayan who is an oval. He could eat truma. So when Gemara says, how do you know? Ama say just the opposite. Veloy Arelis. Any a Yisrael, only a Yisrael can't eat, can't eat truma, but maybe an oral could eat truma. Hoksa, the Gemara says the opposite, but Hok said ish ish. The Pasik says an extra word ish ish to tell you that an oral cannot eat truma. So the Gemara says, Umara Isa, what made you decide it this way? You have one Pasik that says something can't eat truma, and one Pasik that says something could eat truma. So you decided that an oral can't eat truma, and an oinin could eat truma. Why don't you say the opposite? So the Gemara says, Mistavra Arelis Havi Rabuya. It makes more sense to say Arelis is not permitted to eat truma. Why? Shekane. Because mechuser ma'isa u'ma'isa begufoi ve'onish bekaris, it has so many things wrong. When somebody is an oral, he's missing something. He didn't do an action on on on, on himself, and it's an action that's on his body. It's not like he didn't perform put on tefillin ve'onish karis. And if you don't give yourself a brismila, really, you're supposed to get karis. The yeshle lefnei adiba. It's a mitzvah that's supposed to that that was told over to us before uh, Har Sinai by Avram Avinu. And and we find by carbon pesach milas harva vodemakevus. You don't give a bris mila to your to your children or or your slaves. They stop you from eating carbon pesach. So we see having a bris mila is very very important. So the Gemara says other rabbi just say the opposite. Aninis I would say an oval eating truma is, is should be prohibited. Why? Shekain yeshter bechol shaa because an oval it's possible to be be an oval at any hour. Unlike a, a, a oral, once you give yourself a bris mila, it can you know you're out of the problem. But here, oimin uh, an oval is is in every hour. But the head is by noshim and noshim, and it applies by men and women. Then be yadul sakinat. I mean, you can't fix yourself. You have to wait till after you get up from shiva. So maybe the Torah prohibited you an oimin from eating truma. So the Moses hanach nefishin. There are more reasons to say that an oral shouldn't eat truma. Then an oinim should eat truma. That's why we say an oinim could eat truma and an oral cannot eat truma. And Ishish tells you an oral can't, and uh, and and Cholzar will tell you uh, Ishish can tell you an oral cannot, and the Cholzar will tell you an oinim could eat truma. Rava Amon Rava says you can't really say that an oinim uh, uh, is included in the word ish ish of not eating truma. Because Amakra, the Pasuk says, ish, ish, these people can't eat truma. These men can't eat truma. So, Ezehu Davash, Yeshnam Ish, Veinam Isho. What type of situation of a problem that only applies by a man and not a woman? That means Arelus, only an oral is a type of man that can eat truma. And that's what the Torah is telling you. A type, there's another type of man besides a tame that can eat truma, which is that's an oral. So it must be that an oinin could eat truma. So now the Gemara just finishes off the point. Okay, Rabbi Akiva learned it from ish ish, right? The, in the red over here is ish ish. Now the question becomes, what does he do with the Taishav Sochir that is written by, that is written by Karben Pesach? Torah sells you a Taishav Sochir lo Doesn't mean a Jewish slave. Taishav and Sochir is another way to refer to a Jewish slave cannot eat carbon Pesach? Of course they could eat carbon Pesach. A Jewish slave, a Jewish worker that you have, could eat the carbon Pesach. So what does Rabbi Kiva tell you with this Toysh of Socher teach you? Why, what, what is it teaching you? Who's, who else cannot eat the carbon Pesach? Rabbi Kiva has to do something with that word. 
So the Gemara, that's the Gemara over here. Rabbi Kiva, hai Tosh Socha, my Ovid lay. What does he do with the Tosh Socha? Amar of Shmaya, la Tuye, that includes Aravi Mohul, the Givoyne Mohul. If you have a Goy that malad himself, like an Arab or Givoynim, a type of nation that gives bris to their to their to their people, they can't eat the carbon pesa. So the Gemara asks, of course they can't eat the carbon pesa. If an Arab gives himself bris mila, he's still not called. He's still called an oral. He's still called an uncircumcised. The Hani Mulininu. Are they called bris mila? In fact, when the Arabs or when they these divinim give bris mila, they do it not the Jewish way. So they're not considered to be have a bris mila because what well, now we learned in the Mishnah. Koinim shani nehanelareilam. A guy makes a nether that he doesn't want to have any benefit from somebody who is an oral. So an oral is another name for a goy, even if he has a bris mila. So the Mishnah Mish explains, Muta Bareli Yisrael, he's permitted to have uh, benefit from an oral, a Jewish person, even though he didn't get a bris mila. And, and he said, I'm not going to have enough from an oral. An oral Yisrael is not considered an oral. But also, and he is prohibited from benefiting from even a goy that had bris mila. So we see that even when a goy gives himself a bris mila, he's still called an oral. And of the opposite, says the Mishnah. He swears he doesn't want to have any benefit from, from, uh, from anybody who has a bris mila. He's, so he's a, he doesn't want to have any benefit from Jewish people. So he's mutted to have benefit from a, a, a guy who gave himself a bris mila, because that's not what he meant by the word mulin. But also by Israel, really, he's also to even a gi that gave him that doesn't have a bris mila, because mulin is another name for a Jew, and aral is another name for a guy. But what you see from this mission in Trum and in, in the Dorim is that even if a guy gives himself a bris mila, he, he's still called an aral. So certainly, I don't need a pasuk to tell me that a guy that gives himself a bris mila cannot eat the carbon pesach. Of course not. So what do you do with the taisha of sachir? So the Gemara answers, ger The ger, if a ger just gave himself a bris mila, so he really took upon himself to become a Jew, and he gave himself a bris mila, the problem is he didn't go to the mikvah. So then he can't have the carbon pesa. Or, the cotton shenoylek shuma. And let's say you have a young an infant that was born had having a bris mila. He also cannot take the, the carbon pesa when he grows up. Why? He, has a, he was born with a bris mila. He didn't even need a mile. His, his parents uh, saved on the mile. The answer is, Viksava, Rabbi Kiva holds that even if somebody was born with a bris mila, he has to make a cut and he has to let some blood flow. So therefore, he's still called a mahol, probably, but he still has an obligation to let blood flow, and therefore he can't eat the carbon Pesach. And that is what Toshev Socher um, uh, includes. Says the Gemara, Vrablezer. Vrablezer, how does he know this situation, the ger and the cotton? So Vrablezer, this fits perfectly with him. Latame. The Omar, he said, ger shemo v'loitovo, if a ger gave himself a bris mila and didn't go to the mikvah, he could eat the carbon pesa. Ger ma'alyahi, he's still considered a good converted goy, and he could start partaking in the carbon pesa. The kusovar, and also a blessed hole, cotton shanoi le mohol, ain't sorak latin men and bris. A cotton that was born having a bris mila does not have to give himself a bris mila. So he doesn't have to let blood flow. So Therefore, he doesn't. He, so, therefore, Rabbi Leza doesn't need Taish of Sacha to teach you that because he holds they are supposed to eat the carbon pasa. That's why Rabbi Leza uses Taish of Sacha as Exeris Shava as the limit to teach you that an oral can't eat truma. Rabbi Leza, hi ish ish, my Ovidle. What does Rabbi Leza do with the ish ish? This is Rabbi Kiva's drasha to teach you that uh, an oral can't eat truma. It says twice ish. So Gemara says, Dibra Torah to kill Shem Adam. Sometimes the Torah repeats itself, just like people, when they talk, they also repeat themselves. And therefore, it's you don't have to darsh in every extra word in the Torah, according to Rabbi Lezim. New Gemara, and this is the way it gets fascinating. We, I, I told you that if you don't, you, um, you take it for granted that an oral is somebody who's over eight days old and didn't get a bris mila. That's called an uncircumcised person. What would you say to this case? Boyer of Chama Bar Ukva. Cotton oral, an infant one day old. So you can't give him a bris mila. And can he use and benefit and smear that infant, that one day old infant? Can you smear him and smearing oil on, the, with, on a person is like drinking. 
And so can you smear that infant with the oil of truma? It's a real lumdisha question because technically he, he, he's, he doesn't have a bris milah. But the, on the other hand, he's not allowed to have a bris milah. The fact is he's uncircumcised, but it's not his time to get the bris milah. Would that stop him from benefiting from truma? Or, would it not, or does it matter? It doesn't stop him. It's only when you're supposed to get a bris milah and you don't, that's when you're called an oral. So Amr Abzeira, it's a fascinating question. Amr Abzeira, Abzeira said, Toshima, come in here. And here, what the Gemara is going to prove from somewhere else, that from the Chumash, that, uh, that even if you're one day old, you're still called an oral. Because we learned already that you're supposed to give a bris milah to your your sons, your son, um, and only then can you partake in the carbon Pesach. If you have a son that you didn't give a bris meal to, you can't, you can't eat from the carbon Pesach. So Toshima, come in here. What the Gemara just said over here, the Torah tells you two things. One, that if you have a slave, right over here on my screen, we have a slave, you have to give him bris mila, and then you can eat the carbon pesach. You see the oz yoichal boy. Then you can eat the carbon pesach. So by an evet, it tells you to eat the carbon pesach, you have to give your evet a bris mila. But then the Torah says, when you are making the carbon pesach, the pesach l'ashem, the Torah says, hima loy kol when you're making the carbon pesach, make sure that all your children have a bris mila. So the, how do you know that by an evet, you have to have your ever have a bris mila when you make the carbon pasach, and your child have to have a bris mila when you're eating the carbon pasach. So the Gemara says there's a gzer shava that says uz and uz that you apply whatever is written over here to over here to over there. So therefore, by an eved, your slave has to have a bris mila when you're shechting the carbon pasach and making the carbon pasach, and at night when you're eating the carbon pasach. And your child also the same th- idea when you, when you're shechting the carbon pasach. And when you're eating the carbon Pesach, you have to have your child has to have a bris mila. So the Gemara is wondering, how is it possible that your child did not, ha- uh, uh, once you tell me that your child has to have a bris mila when you're shechting the carbon Pesach, so then certainly he's going to have a bris mila when you're eating the carbon Pesach. You're going to give him a bris mila the day before you're, you're making the carbon Pesach. So w- what's the case? What's the case of having someone of having your child, um, having a child that that was didn't need a bris mila when you were making the carbon pasach, but needs a bris mila when you're eating the carbon pasach. So that's Gemara's question. I can come up with a case by slaves that that these slave you didn't have to give him a bris mila when you're shechting the carbon pasach. Why? Because you they came into your life. This slave became into your possessions when you were eating the carbon pasa. But this slave was not around when you were shechting the carbon pasa. Kagoin, for example, does a bina bene bene. When you bought the evet, after you made the carbon pasa, let's say uh Arab Pesach in the afternoon, you bought you bought a slave. So therefore, that is a possibility of a slave not around when you made the carbon pasa, but is around when you're eating the carbon pasa. El is but your baby son. How is it possible the Ishnai Bishasa Khila, the Snai Bishasa Seal? He was around when you're eating the carbon pasach, and you didn't have to give him a bris mila when he you were making the carbon pasach. Hey Khimishkachasla, how is that possible? Allah, what must be the case? The Isyalid Bain Sila Khila. Mazeltov in the afternoon of 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 after you made the carbon pasach, you get a mazeltov. This baby was born, and what is the chiddush of the Torah that you have a one day old infant? In fact, he's a couple hours. If you sit down in Pesach Seder because you didn't give him a bris milah, you can't eat from the carbon pasach because he's your son, and you're not giving it. You didn't give him a bris milah. Ah, it's before the eighth day. We still call him an oral. Shbaminah. From here you see areles shleibes mana have An oral even prior to the eighth day is still called an oral. An infant one day old is called an oral. So back to our question. Can an oral, uh, oral who's normally not allowed to eat a truma, can a cotton oral, uh, one day old cotton smear himself with the oil of truma? The answer should be no. That's what the Gemara says. So the Gemara says no. No proof from there. And the Gemara is going to say that uh, there's other ways to learn Pshat in the Gemara. Amarava, the Tizbra, would it make sense 
that you have to, that the Torah will stop you from eating the carbon Pesach if you have a couple of hour old baby that you didn't give a bris mila. The Torah says, the Torah says, if you were supposed to give him a bris mila, then you can do the carbon Pesach. That's what the Torah is telling you. So it must be that, that what is the, what's the stoppage is only a type of kid that you're supposed to give a bris mila. The this one is not, you know, you can't give a bris mila to this one, one couple of hour old baby. So it can't be that's the story. Here's what we're talking about over here. The reason why you didn't have to give him a bris mila when you were shechting the carbon Pesach, but you're supposed to give him a bris mila after, let's say, before the Seder. What, was, what are we talking about? The kid had a fever. The kid had a fever. He was sick. And he became healed from his fever right after you made the carbon pesa. Wait a second. If someone, if the baby had a fever, you can't give him a bris mila as soon as the fever goes down. shiva. You have to wait seven days. So you have to wait seven days because we learned that if a baby has a, has a fever you can't, and the fever goes down, you have to wait another seven days. Answers the Gemara, the Avina like called Shiva. They gave him seven days. So seven days prior to the shechting of the carbon Pesach, the kid got a fever. So we waited seven days. So the Gemara says, okay, so then why didn't we give him a bris mila in the morning before you made the carbon Pesach? Vinim hole mitzapra. Why didn't you give him a bris mila in the morning before you made the carbon Pesach? Answers the Gemara, be'ena, we go to Ahmed Beis. Be'ena, we need me'es le'es. We need a 24-hour period, a seven-day, 24-hour periods from the time he got sick, from the time he took his temperature and he was sick and he was healed. So then from that moment on, uh, you're supposed to wait 24-hour periods. So let's say they took his temperature and it was normal at two o'clock, at, 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 at five o'clock in the afternoon. So then you have to wait to five o'clock in the afternoon to give him a rasmila. And you made your carbon pass up prior. So you can't give him a bris mila in the morning. You have to wait to five o'clock in the afternoon. So that's a case where a child, you cannot give him a bris mila when you made the carbon Pesach, but you could give him a bris mila after, after you uh, made the carbon Pesach. But Tony Ludoy, so the Gemara says, how do you know that? How do you know that you're supposed to wait 24 hours, mamish me'es le'es, from the time that he's healed? We, the, Ludoy was a chacham that taught us a teaching. When a child... Uh, gets better and gets healed from his fever, it's like the day he was born. My love, what does he mean that they're equal? What does this mean that they're equal, right? They're equal. My love, my yoyam yivoldo, to give a bris mila, loy bi'inam eis leis. You don't need 24 hours. In other words, when a child is, child is born, let's say uh, 10 minutes before shkia, you're ready eight days later, can give him a carbon, you can give him a bris mila in the morning. You don't have to wait 24 hours. So doesn't he mean So the healing process, the healing quarantine, so to speak, that you make him wait, we don't need 24 hours, ace la ace. So the Gemara says, no, like, they're still different. Odef, it's worse. We make it worse from the day of healing to the day of, of losing the temperature to the day of born. The day that you're born, you don't need to wait eight days, 24 hour periods. Again, if your child is born two minutes before Shkia, then you can make him eight days later in the morning. But if you're waiting for him to get healed from his temperature to go down, there you don't need a 24-hour period. Uh, there you need a mamish, a 24-hour period. We're more machmer uh, by sicknesses. You need something 24 hours. The Papa Amar Papa gives another terence. How is it possible to have a child that, that was only came obligated to give him a bris mila after you made your carbon pass up. All his eyes became weak. And he came healed in between. When do I say you have to wait seven days for a baby? Is only if he got temperature. His body was tired, body was sick. But if only his eyes were sick and then it became healed right after you made the carbon pass up, you could give him a bris mila right away. Rava Amarava says another case would be a bris mila that could not have been done earlier when you made the carbon pesach. If their parents were in jail and they had shlucha made the carbon pesach, so when the carbon pesach was made, the parents weren't around to give this kid a bris mila, so they were oynis. 
And therefore, they were released in the afternoon. So they should have given them a bris, the kid the bris mila before the Seder, and they didn't. They can't eat from the carbon Pesach. Rav Kahana Bereder of Nechemi Amah, Kagoyim Timtim Shnikrum and Itza Zocha Bainabainen. Really, it was a child. And the child didn't, was not required to get a bris mila because he had a membrane covering his, his organ. And, and that split open after, after you made the carbon Pesach. After the father made the carbon Pesach, they split it open. We discovered he's a male. So therefore, that's how the possibility is that you didn't have to give him a bris mila when you made the carbon Pesach, but you give him a bris mila after, after you made the carbon Pesach, prior to eating, sitting down and eating the carbon Pesach. And here's the most strangest tarots. Rav Shrevi Shrei says, Kugoyin, an example. Listen to this example. The, the kid like, with, like this was born like this. The kid stuck, was born seven days before Pesach, okay? And, but he only stuck his head out and his mo- wife, his mother, was sitting there with the kid's head out, but the, the body itself remained inside the baby, inside the mother's stomach. When did it totally come out? Seven days, eight days later. Right after you made the carbon Pesach, Mazel Tov, the entire body came out. But really, his head came out first. So therefore, you could give him a bris mila as soon as he's born. So the Gemara says, the Gemara says, is that a possible case? So Michaya, could a baby live that long? In other words, if it stuck his head out and it didn't, the, the, and the entire body didn't come out, how could that baby live? But Tanya, we learned in Abraisa, Kevin Shiotz La'avir Oilam. As soon as a baby comes out to this world, Nifta Chasosum. Whatever his mouth, which was closed, opens up, so now he can take in breath. And the belly button closes so he can't take in food, uh, like he was when he was in the mother's stomach. If it didn't happen like that, if it didn't work like that, he can't live one hour. So in other words, then when this kid stuck his head out, so how is he surviving? His stomach didn't close up. His stomach is still inside the, the mother's stomach in the mother's body, and that's still open, that's a very dangerous situation. So then the Gemara says that you can't live like that. So the Gemara says, you could live like that. That means that the, the, somebody got a fever there. And when you get a fever, somehow you're able to survive much, much longer than you can if you didn't have that fever. In other words, just like you find that Holocaust survivors were able to live long periods of time uh, with, with typhus or whatever it was, um, because uh, they had this special fever. So this baby, uh, this baby benefited from a fever that allowed him to live for eight days without taking food inside its body through the placenta. For Gemara said, Ishta Daman, who was really had the fever? Ilem Ishta Diday, that the child had the fever. If the child had the fever, as soon as it's born, you have to wait another seven days. And says the Gemara, that the, the, the fever of the mother uh, is what's nourishing the child. So the base B comes out. His mouth opens, but at the same time, even though its body is in its mother's stomach, somehow the belly button is closed. So how is it surviving? The answer is that uh, a fever of the mother somehow affects the child and it could survive seven days. The Iba is saying, if you want, when do I say that the child could die? If he doesn't scream, if it's screaming, its head is out of the, of the womb, but it's, it's, it's screaming, it could still live. One more minute and we'll stop. So basically, by the way, what do we come across? What do we conclude over here? That an oral, a one baby, one day baby old child Possibly, you don't have a proof to this, but it's possible that that's one baby old, one day baby old child is not called an oral. And could you could smear him with truma on it? Because what's called an oral only after seven days, only after eight days pass when you're supposed to give him a bris mila and you don't. That's called an oral. But if he didn't come under the obligation of bris mila, that's not called an oral. Oral An oral, if you're an oral, you sprinkle and he's tummy mace and he doesn't have a bris mila. The, the Torah says that you could accept, he could, you could sprinkle on him the paraduma waters. It's not usser on him. 
it's going to work. And then he goes to the mikveh and he's matar himself from, from being a tummy mace. Shekei metzin b'avaseinu. We find by our forefathers when they entered Eretz Yisrael, shekibl hazor k'shem arelam. They, they, they had the water sprinkled on them when they were uncircumcised. This is the chaparaduma waters. Shenema, the Pesach says, v'ham olam in yadim b'asol l'chaydesh arisha. They came out of the yarday on the 10th of Nisan. And that year they arrived in Eretz Yisrael with Yahushua. Four days later, they made the carbon Pesach. And they gave themselves a bris milah on the 10th day of, of Nisan. So they gave themselves a bris milah, but they must have sprinkled themselves prior to them, prior to the 10th day of Nisan, while they were still uncircumcised. And here we see that an uncircumcised person could have this water sprinkled on Seth. On the 10th day, they didn't give themselves a bris milah because they were still tired from coming from the desert. Hazama saying, "Was Abed Leibun? Did they give themselves the Hazor Lav Kishen Harel when they were Oral? So therefore, we see they did. The, uh, they the, you, know, you could sprinkle on an Oral. So the Gemara asks one last question: Did they allow Abed Pesach Klal? Maybe they didn't do the carbon Pesach when they arrived in Eretz Yisrael for the first time in Yeshua. So the Gemara says, Lo Yisalka I wouldn't think that way because the part right away says the Sefer Yeshua says, by Yasus Pesach. As soon as they arrived in Israel, four days later they made a carbon Pesach." Maybe they didn't sprinkle the paraduma waters on themselves. And everybody was a Tame. And they, it was a Pesach that was brought and where everybody's Tame. We learned that if the entire Claudius role is Tame, and Tame Mace, which that's what they were, you're allowed to bring the carbon Pesach. We have an open brisa that says that when the Jews arrived into Israel, Malu, they gave themselves a bris mila. The tavlu, they went to the mikvah. But also pischeim betahara, the come pesachs were done when they're totally pure. So it must be they already started sprinkling themselves with paraduma waters prior to them coming to Tarit Israel when they were all considered arelim. Okay.